What's the most ked up thing you woke up to? I was about 4 or 5 years old, and woke up hearing tiny, mew, mew. I legit thought Pokemon was real and there was a mew in my room. I opened my eyes so excited, and I was covered in blood. My cat had given birth right on top of me. I immediately started crying, and my mom rushed in. She said it was beautiful, but I was absolutely horrified. I thought these wet little alien creatures just killed my cat. My cat was fine, all of her kittens were healthy and adorable. But I will certainly never forget being birthed on. My husband sleep fighting. I woke up to grunting, and looked over to see the silhouette of someone throwing punches and my husband not in bed. The figure came towards me, and I screamed while thinking, there's an intruder. My husband is dead and I'm next. My scream woke him up. Turns out he was dreaming about a robber breaking in, and he was trying to fight the guy off. I went to bed with a massive huntsman spider on my wall. Was feeling lazy, and I figured it would just go, do spider things somewhere. 10 minutes later curiosity got the better of me, and I switched the bedside lamp back on. There it was on the sheets over my my chest, right near my face. My toddler going, mommy wake up. I don't feel good, and then barfing all over me in bed. A note from my ex explaining, that he had to go home, to change BC he wet the bed, that we were sleeping in together, but he didn't want to wake me. My freshman year at university, my roomie, Johnny, was out for the night and I fell asleep on the couch in the dorm. Around 3 someone loudly opened the door, and came and sat on top of me. At the time I thought oh, room had ended up coming back home, and kicked him off of me with a friendly, off, Johnny, before immediately falling back asleep. About an hour and a half later I woke up to someone in my room screaming where the am I? After the initial confusion. I learned the dude that had sat on me was not my roommate, but the very intoxicated brother of someone who lived on my floor. Coincidentally his name was also Johnny, which led him to believe he was in the right place before he passed out on my floor. I helped him get his bearings, got him some water, and basically carried him back to his brother's room. 10 seconds after waking up, as I sleepily and groggily walked into the kitchen, my tactless little brother casually says over his bowl of cereal, Did you hear that John died? John was my very best friend for my entire life, since we were very young children. We did everything together. Telling me so casually, out of the blue, after I just woke up, was exactly the wrong way of communicating this with me. I was in denial and disbelief for a very long time and it was, and sometimes still is, a very hard grieving process. My brother was only 13 at the time, so it's not really his fault, but I think the way I found out, as opposed to my dad sitting me down, to have a serious conversation, absolutely played a role in how challenging it was, in my opinion. John died after falling off of his skateboard, and onto his head, while skating down a steep hill. Please always wear a helmet. My wife, dead beside me in bed, died in her sleep of an undiagnosed heart condition. My roommate in college snuck in an old dude she met on the internet. I woke up to him looking at me from her bed. I woke up to find that my arm didn't work anymore. Apparently I slept at a weird angle and cut off flow to the nerves. I picked up the arm with my other hand and threw it against the wall. Didn't feel anything. Fortunately that only lasted a minute or two before the pins and needles settled back in. I had a girlfriend who had a little studio apartment in a multi-unit building. The bed was basically 5 or 6 feet to the right of the apartment door. One night I woke up half drunk and there was a dude standing next to the bed looking down at me. The door was ajar. I got up, and kind of went raw, and he freaked, and ran out the door and I closed it and locked it. I never found out what the deal was with that. My alarm clock was set to a, usually, FM music station. Again. To sum up, the Challenger spacecraft has exploded on takeoff. Cockroach crawling from my neck to my hair, takes the king cake every time. One time I woke up at 1am to loud repeated knocking on my front door downstairs. I woke up my wife, and told her to call the police, and retrieved my shotgun. It was Papa John's trying to deliver a pizza to my sister, who had stayed with us on a previous weekend, and ordered pizza to our place then, and I guess, hadn't updated the address and ordered again. It was a weird night. Edit, some really odd mixed responses.
I was upstairs asleep and heard loud banging and shouting downstairs at a time when no one should be at my house. I didn't start shooting wildly into the darkness, just had the police called and armed myself in case it became necessary to defend my family. I didn't know it was a pizza delivery guy, and I didn't know the banging was knocking loudly, until I went to see what was up. Once we figured out what was going on it wasn't a big deal, and we sent the guy to the right address. I've never had to discharge my shotgun in defense, and I hope I never have to. I had another similar experience where people tried to break into an apartment I was living at. I blocked the door, called the police, and retrieved my shotgun. I'm not sure what steps other people suggest you take, but this seems reasonable to me. The sounds of our cat trying to throw up, the wife pushing it off the bed towards me, and then the cat clawing my face and lip as it was trying to get away from my wife. I cried a little. I was sleeping in a tent in Kuwait when a Patriot missile shot off over our heads. It was very loud, very close and at the time, I had no idea if it was incoming or outgoing. I jumped on the ground, dirt, and then ran for the bunker. Scary stuff. I had a friend who lived next door when I was a kid. I woke up one morning, like 7 or 8 am, to a lot of shouting and approaching sirens, and looked outside my bedroom window to see her house engulfed in flames. She and her dad and her younger brother were in the desert that weekend, and I could see her mom in their backyard with the baby brother, so we knew everyone was okay. But it was surreal watching my friend's house burn. Woke up to my ceiling fan on full speed hanging from a single wire. It had fallen down while I was sleeping, and I somehow managed to continue sleeping with it whipping around my room only a few inches from my body. When I had a tooth removed, when I was younger, I woke up in my beloved bunk bed the next morning to all of my bedding and pillows covered in blood. I didn't know I was also covered in blood until I went to show my parents. I nearly made them poop their pants. Heck, I nearly pooped my pants when I saw myself. The most ked up thing about it? There was blood all over my favorite cat shaped pillow. Have you ever grazed your fingernails across your pillow when moving around in bed? It makes a specific noise, especially if you're laying, so your rear is pressed to the pillow. I woke up to this, but it was a combination of the scraping and tapping. I quickly realized something was crawling around on my pillow. I shot up almost in tears, and ran straight to my mom's room, she was convinced that it was a cricket, as we had reptiles, I knew for a fact that whatever was on my pillow was too big to be making that noise, so her and my sisters go back to the room with me, all of them laughing at me as I'm shaken. Turn the light on and nothing, but I hear something, and tell them to listen, then they hear it. We move some stuff around, and it was a king mouse. Edit, my mom says, that it was a feeder mouse, meant for our ball python, that had chewed through the box it came in after my sister forgot to put it away. Either way, waking up in pure darkness to feel something, that's obviously not a bug scurrying across your pillow isn't fun. I once woke up with a puddle of old vomit next to me. I was in my bed and I guess I either didn't wake up or just fell back asleep immediately and didn't care. I still don't remember actually throwing up. It was really gross. Note, this wasn't alcohol related, I had a stomach flu. I was about 5 years old at the time, and my mum was yelling at me to get out of bed earlier than usual. I heard screaming from outside my bedroom, so I got up to go see what it was. There was blood all over the floor and my younger brother was crying. Turns out he'd hurt himself very very badly and had to go to the hospital and get stitches. I was living in Northern Virginia, and was invited to a New Year's Eve party. So I bought two bottles of champagne to take with me. But it started snowing, and I didn't think I should go out. So I stayed home, watching TV and eating popcorn and drinking champagne. Both bottles. I woke up next morning on the bathroom floor with a black eye. Toss up between the Northridge quake or the time, when after an hour of half asleep fidgeting from random itches to discovering a swarm of small sugar, ants had decided my bed would make a great new home, and were trying to move in. Oh and when the cat had diarrhea 5 inches from my face on the bed. That counts too. I was 13 and my 4 year old sister came to my room super late at night carrying a knife, and woke me up and quietly said, I'm going to kill you. Then walked right out of my room. The knives were high out of reach, or so we thought, but she somehow got them. 
hid then for a long time after that. Last week I had a dream, where someone was doing the most annoying sound in the world from Dumb and Dumber, and then that person said, want to hear the only sound more annoying? And the next moment my alarm woke me up. I don't think I have ever been trolled so hard by my subconscious in my life. My mom watching Kujo, I was like 8. I heard my mom describing the plot of Kujo to my sister while asleep. I was dreaming about Pokemon and Kujo invaded my dream. Kujo attacked Squirtle while I grabbed Pikachu and ran for safety. I woke up in a cold sweat. I woke up in the middle of the night and felt someone holding my hand. I'm trying not to flip my, so I slowly scan the room. No one there. Arm isn't hanging off the bed, so it's not an under the bed goblin this time. No weird lumps under my covers. I'm starting to assume there's a severed king hand in my bed, so I freak out and let go slash throw the covers, so I can see what the is going on. It was my own goddamn numb hand. My sister trying to suck my dick when I was 14 or something, and she was 15 at that time. Edit, sorry didn't saw the replies so here's how the story goes. I used to live in a big joint family with two uncles and three older sisters. The family was big, but the house wasn't, so I never got the house to myself ever. But that one day, when my entire family was going to attend a wedding, but I couldn't, because of an exam so, when I came back from the paper I thought I was home alone, and I had an age old fantasy of sleeping on my living room couch naked, so that day I did, but to my surprise my sister was home too, and in her room upstairs, when I was dancing naked in the living room, and she told my mom, that I would be bored, and she wanted to keep me company. Edit 2, sorry for not giving you guys an ending. I woke up to someone touching my thighs and my dick. I was shocked and started kicking like a madman, and injured her face. She ran into her room crying and yelling you don't even have a gf you should be thankful. Then I got dressed, and got out of that house, and went to my friend's place. And came back only after my parents were home. I never told anyone, and never actually talked to my sister much. I was in Detox, and I didn't have a roommate. I woke up to someone in my room around 5am. He didn't respond when I spoke to him, so I figured he was on a bunch of meds, and I went back to sleep. As I'm laying there I realize that the room now smells like a fireplace slash campfire. I was going through alcohol withdrawal, so I didn't think much of it. I wake up and go to breakfast, and one of the staff asked me if I had met my roommate yet. Without answering he puts a newspaper in front of me, and the article's title was Local Man Attempts Suicide, by burning down his own house. My roommate had lost his job that day, went on a bender and set his bedroom on fire, while he laid on the floor. The fireman dragged him out kicking and screaming, and when he saw the police he tried to get them to shoot him by attacking them. I left for a hab the next day, so I never really got to talk to him. When I was about 11, I woke up in the middle of the night to my bedroom door, which was always left open, banging back and forth, rapidly, against the wall. Except there was no one there. I could visually see it moving by itself. I screamed bloody murder and a minute later my mom comes running into my room. My dog had been sleeping in front of the door, and began to scratch himself with his hind legs, making the door move with his motion. My bed was positioned, so that the foot of my bed blocked that floor area from my view. I could only see the top two thirds of the door. Another time, same age, I woke up to tapping on my bedroom window. This was a one floor arch style home, and the window sills were 5 to 8 inches off the ground. Again, screamed like I was about to be murdered. Mom runs in, asks what's wrong, and goes to open the shades, to which I scream even more, because I don't want to see who's out there. It was our family cat who had escaped earlier that day, trying to get back in. One of his nails was stuck in the screen, and as he tried to dislodge it, it would tap 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 against the glass. I'm still a chicken to this day, FYI. <laughs>